before we get started, uh, Alan will be here in just a few minutes. He says he'll be here right, right at six. There's some refreshments back there in, in the back. Uh, feel free to uh, get anything. That's what they're there for. Uh, purpose of this meeting tonight will be to discuss a bylaw and enabling legislation amendment uh, that Alan will present before the uh, legislature uh, next year in January. And then also to discuss uh, both the Hart County Board of Commissioners and the Franklin County Board of Commissioners agreed to do an audit of the airport finances, and then uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, but uh, just kind of introduce everybody. I'm Joe Yorsin, the Hart County Board of Commissioners Chairman. Uh, Mr. Marshall Sayer, he's a Vice Chairman. Uh, Frankie Teasley and Ricky Carter, are four commissioners. Uh, and then we do have uh, one seat that uh, is open right now. So, Mr. Bridges, if you want. Yeah, we want to welcome everybody here. I'm Thomas Bridges, uh, chairman of the Marketing Council. And down here is Eddie Weston, who's uh, District 3, I believe, 2, 4, excuse me. And then we've got Brian Swales here from District 3. And then we've got Robert Franklin from District 1. Uh, this is Jason Mike, Dr. Jason Baxson. He's a bed over in Livonia, and he's going to be taking my place here. He's uh, Chairman elect, and where's Kyle at? Here. And that's the guy who's coming in to the Boston. I know we've got some members of the Airport Authority here. Yeah, I'm Mike Boyd. Kevin, Mike. Kevin, 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 Kevin Frame, Secretary Treasurer. Anybody else? Anybody else? We we waiting on Alan. We got all our introductions ready. So. Uh, yeah, I, I will. Uh, this is Terrell Partain here in the blue. This is our Hart County Administrator and uh, Terry Harris, the Franklin yeah. County. Got Terry here. Yeah. And we appreciate the efforts that those guys put in for, for both boards. I can tell you that. Uh, I know we we run Terrell pretty ragged sometimes. And we have Kayla Fager back here. She's a clerk. And uh, Gene Conwell is back in the back. Fresh. Yeah, we appreciate yeah, Gene. Gene put all the stuff together. So yeah. Y'all, somebody get you a sandwich and something to drink. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, since this is a joint meeting, I guess I'll call the order the, the Hart County Board of Commissioners. We will call the order of the Franklin County. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we'll just call this this meeting to order between the joint meeting with the Hart County Board of Commissioners and the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. And, uh, the first thing we're talking about is the enabling legislation as far as the amendments that we want to discuss, uh, particularly to address the conflict of interest portion in the enabling legislation. I think we all feel like that for the airport authority to be successful, we've got to have people who have knowledge of aviation and aviation operations and things of that nature. Um, you definitely wouldn't want to start up a, a little league organization if you didn't have baseball coaches that knew something about baseball. So that's kind of the thoughts from the Hart County side. And I know there's been some conversation. I think that's what we're all here for is to, to talk about that. Uh, and in conversations that I've had with uh, Representative Powell, who's with us now. Um, there's some things that just changing one affects other authorities in the state and uh, this time I'll just go ahead and turn it over to him and let him uh, kind of tell us what his thoughts are on addressing this situation. Thanks Joey. Can y'all hear me in the back? Uh, this issue came up uh, I guess it within the last six or eight months. Uh, and Joy pretty well summed it up, but you know, the Franklin Hart County Airport Authority is unique that it's a, uh, it's a two county airport authority. That in itself is unusual, but, uh, but it is what it is. And you know, what happened was that there was a, the accusations of conflict of interest because of uh, one of the airport members doing a land swap. Everything that I had understood throughout all the discussion was that there wasn't any criminal intent, nor was there any financial gain 
made. And if there's something different, somebody needs to tell me if it was something else. But still, at the uh, at the discussions with the district attorney and the investigators at that time, they couldn't find any reason uh, for that to happen and it being absolutely legal. I talked to our uh, council that works for the legislature, some of my folks, and they agreed they looked at it because in that original template for the charter for the airport authority, there was nothing in there that would allow for a pathway for a member to be able to have a ground lease or to buy something from that uh, from the airport that they govern. Now, Joey said it correct. What this has done, this has put about 20 plus airports around the state that are doing basically the same thing. Uh, a number of the members of the airport authority here uh, that they've always had an interest in aviation. And quite frankly, Joey summed it up quite well that, you know, your best people are going to be the folks that have an interest and have knowledge of <clears throat> what that is and what, what transpires with a, uh, an airport authority. So then the question that becomes, what do we do with this? Because I understand you've had one of the airport authority members who was replaced. I think you've had one or two of them that resigned for the same, for the same cause because they didn't want to wind up being investigated or accused of something else. So now the question is, what do you need to do? There's several ways of doing it. I've talked to our leg council. And our legislative council has recommended, there's also in general statute, there's language today because you want reporting, you want things to be factual. You know, I understood if I remember what all the stuff that I'd heard was that uh, what happened to uh, that airport authority member after the investigation was that there was no criminal intent, but it was still supposedly wasn't the right thing to be doing. Well, if that's so, then we need to fix that. Uh, that council has told me there's a several ways that we could do it. Uh, I do not recommend going through general statute because to pass a general law is a whole lot more difficult than it meets the eye because it affects so many other airports authorities around the state. One of the things we looked at was uh, maybe doing it through the local act that created this airport authority. And that would be to put to, to link it to some current language in the law that deals with reporting and ethics and how that would work according to uh, leg council that there is there's current under current georgia law that deals with general circumstances was that in the case of this authority that if a member wanted to lease a piece of property do a ground lease or something like that uh, then the the board itself could approve it uh, approve the terms and then it would have to go in front of the probate judge for scrutinization and that probate judge could advertise it and also the spirit court judge would be copied on that but it would be so that they could uh, scrutinize it uh, and let the public know so there's you know transparency to know what's going on and uh, you know his suggestions was that works quite well in a lot of other type of governmental functions or governmental entities that are these quasi boards uh, the airport authority is unique from the standpoint that it is a governmental entity. They're not beholding, nor are they, are they uh, to be governed by the governing authority of Hart or Franklin County. The duties of these two county commissions, and that's to appoint those board members. They're doing that for a specific reason. Uh, and then that board is supposed to run that airport and then adhere to all the laws and the wherefores and all of that. So that being said, I mean, I'll throw, I'll throw it out for y'all. This is y'all's party tonight. So let me know what your thoughts are on this. Well, my first thought, uh, Alan, is uh, have we talked to the probate judges in the two counties and see what their thinking is if they if the baby was laid into their lap to make the decision and how that would affect them. Have, have anybody talked to probate judges in our counties? That's already general statute. 
they're elected to do the job that's, that's provided by law. If we do this, then they're already mandated to enforce that law. And in, in the case that you talk about, had the probate judge approved it or documentation been provided, that wouldn't have been an issue at all. Is that my understanding? Is that right? My understanding is that, that, that once it is once it's been approved by that board, <coughs> then it's then sent to the probate judge. And then they look at it and if they decide there's some questions to it, then they can basically publicize this. And that brings as we all know that once you make something public, people are gonna speak up if they think there's something that's not uh, correct that's going on. Could you explain land swap? Land swap? Yeah, that's what you referred to earlier. Well, let's, let's focus on what we're gonna do first. Well, it, it just does have something to do with it because I, I don't know what you mean by land swap and that that occurred previously. Well, what I understood, what I understood, and if I'm wrong, then somebody needs to correct me, but what I'd understood was that the former chairman of the airport authority had a hangar. He owned the hangar, or was that on the property leased from the airport? It was his hangar. It was his hangar. He owned the hangar. He owned the land that it sat on. No, he did not. He had so a lease. he had a lease on that property. That's correct. And my understanding is that he wanted to swap that hangar, or it was approved by the airport authority to swap that hangar for another hangar that needed to be rebuilt. No. It did not need to be rebuilt. <coughs> Oh, yeah, that you know, there's a lot of myths out there about this situation. The the hangar that he swapped you know, <clears throat> was the authority's hangar, and he was swapping his hangar for it. And basically, the myth is that the hangar needs to be torn down. Well, I was in that hangar two weeks before it was swapped. And over to the chairman, and actually, we had a banquet in that hangar. The Chamber of Commerce had a banquet in that hangar, and it looked pretty doggone good to me. And basically, I guess when you swap something that belongs to the public or the authority, there's a procedure that you go through, advertise. You advertise that you're going to let this hangar go. We had people that was wanting to buy that hangar from the authority. And they was told that it's already said what was going to be done. So we had people ready to dish out money for that hangar, as is, pay good money for it, but they was denied. <clears throat> and back to your question about the probate judge, I think. I'd be shocked in talking to Ken Everson this week. He was, he was at, uh, probably a puzzle. Why would that be dumped in his lap? Because he didn't see it as the probate judge coming to his jurisdiction. And when the authority approves something, if he didn't approve it, you know, I have to put him in a bad light with the members of the airport authority. So I can see difficulty there. And I'm going to throw out a, a challenge tonight to the Hart County and Franklin County to come up with what the other people in the, in the state does is have a manager. And the manager could do the same thing as the probate judge, but he'd be managing the whole thing. You wouldn't have volunteers taking receipts taking out money, making deposits, you'd have a manager over everything. You'd have a manager that would welcome people coming in. And you could have the authority as an advisor and authority boy to that manager, people with planes and hangers and so forth, but he would actually be the manager that reports to Hart County and reports to Franklin County. <coughs> and in checking, I can't find another airport anywhere in the state of Georgia that doesn't have a manager. I remember a few years ago, Habersham was in chaos, just like we've been in chaos. 
Now they went and changed the legislation and hired a manager to do all these things and it reports to the, the board. <coughs> and talking with Stacy Hall, the chairman of the house him, said the best move they made, they was losing money. And now they are making money and having planes incredibly coming in and purchasing fuel from. And he said he would like to if anybody wanted to find out directly from him how successful that is, it is the fact that can anybody tell us another airport in the state of Georgia that doesn't have a manager? One of the other things about the manager part and the members of the board, uh, I believe the state law says you can't have a financial interest in the airport, and otherwise you can't be a property owner at the airport, be it the building or whatever, for exactly this reason, the conflict of interest, including the manager. <clears throat> one of the things when this thing, I was one of the people interested in building or um, buying the hangar, renovating it, fixing it, tearing it down, whatever, um, should have gone up for bid, in my opinion. That's uh, normally how you dispose of government property. But uh, yeah, I know uh, Mr. Kesey here was uh, another one that wanted to bid on that hangar. And, we expressed that interest prior to the uh, the vote on the hangar being disposed of. The airport was short of funds. One of the things I said, well, we'll swap hangars, and the airport that Mr. Addison owned would now become open for rent for people at the airport. Is that hangar being rented now? No. Or is it still sitting? Apparently, it's probably down here. Let me shed some light on this. Bill Warren. The authority has since organized in the 1990s. And uh, I'm going to shed some light on this hangar situation and the way it exactly happened. Uh, Mr. Addison was trying to purchase the hangar from Mr. Bryant. And we get right down to the figures, it was $25,000. And the check was accepted and then it was denied after the former chairman. Uh, paid Mr. Uh, Brown $45,000 for it. And, uh... Clarify, uh, you're not talking about any... No, no. Former Chair and Harris went ahead and the authority approved that at a meeting that I was not at that night. <coughs> I didn't see what happened that night. I was involved in a firefighter funeral, but anyway, that's beside the point. Afterwards, I approached the chairman a little to see what it would take to repair the hangar. Right? And uh, the meeting y'all talked about it happened by me. People that came down to have a party down there in the Chamber of Commerce, there were holes in the roof and all the uh, skylights that deteriorated were off at that time. All right, when I looked at the hangar, and I've been in construction business my whole life, no trusses in that hangar were handmade trusses made with uh, six pin coated nail drove in pieces of steel, and they were all loose and backing out. Now, true, they were still holding. Right? And all the west side of the hangar, on the lower side, water was coming under it, and the floor was lower than the outside. So all that side would have to be tore off and redone to make the hangar up to standard. All the material on the north side of the hangar, the side that blew off of it, because the OSP behind it had deteriorated so much that it wouldn't hold a screw. All right, and the uh, electrical in the hangar was really not up to par for anything. And uh, the hangar was used enough twice its footprint just because of the way the door was open. And uh, it was using a lot of room on both sides to slide those doors out faster. The whole roof was rusted, been on there, it's totally rusted, it'd have to be redone. All the land on the building was in bad shape. And I came up with a price. He tore the wall down, cut the floor out, re it, put new trusses, and uh, a roof only could build around $35,000. I told, I told the hangers at the time, I didn't think that was worth doing. The hangar really wasn't worth fixing. You can still use it, but if something happened to it and it went down on an airplane, the airport would be responsible. So thinking back on it, I approached Mr. Addison. It was my idea. 
I said, being as you was wanting that hanger spot to build a new hanger, would you swap your hanger for that old hanger now? And we wouldn't have to deal with rebuilding. And he said he would. And that's what transpired. All we did was swap a spot. He had set it on another. He gave us a bigger footprint to charge a land lease on, and he used up less space. And uh, he benefited nothing from it. He costed the tank down and dig the cement up. And the airport ended up with a hangar that we can rent, which we will rent one when all this is settled. Because at this time right now, I don't see if we can make any move on any land at all or at least another hangar. Well, to this day, that hangar is still not being rented. It is not, but it will be the first of the year. How long ago did you move into your hangar, Eddie? July, maybe. July. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, sure. so it's been sitting, well, actually I'll, it's being used as a for-profit yeah. business, which I'd love to have a building that was paid for by the county for a for-profit for business. Um, and that's not right. But I would have been on that hanger. I know Ed would have, uh, Ted would have been on that hanger. Yeah. And $35,000 to me would have been a bargain for a hanger. And then the, the point is that's why the state has a law about 80, conflict 000. of interest about property owners yeah. on the yeah. uh, uh, we, We're getting off. I want to well, focus we're off subject that's right. here. Hold on time. I want to fix this situation. I think everybody in the room, especially if the government, knows how to get rid of a public facility. And that's not the way you do it. You need to do it correctly. But that's not that's not what we're here for. We're here to fix the problem and hopefully we can fix that problem so we don't have any conflict of interest any, any longer. And I think a manager, rather than going to a probate judge, would be the solution. You tell me another airport that doesn't have a manager, a manager? I'd like to visit that because you look at the detail, you look at the receipts that they get, the money they bring in, the deposit they make, um, with all the people aboard there, it makes sense to have somebody opening up the facility, closing the facility, welcome people coming in, welcome people and advertising the airport. Now, how in the world are we losing money in the past audit on diesel fuel? Blows my mind. Now, now you got to hang on. You got to realize that blows. that did not come Boy. from that appointments that we made. That was from the previous. That's what I'm saying. Uh, that, previous, that needs to be noted because well, it doesn't need to go the last on this But well, that's, that's correct the situation. Well, well that, don't like get the is. wrong impression. Franklin. County, Franklin Hart County Airport, ever since the airport authority has been there, has had an airport manager. It was a guy who worked very hard at it. All of us gave our time and, and we were all volunteers. And he did a good job of managing it. We have an airport manager now that the new authority appointed. So we have an airport manager that their volunteers are not paid. There's a lot of work that goes into being on the airport authority, by the way. George Dorsey appointed me a long time ago, and I, my name is Dick McSpadden, by the way, and I served eight years on it. I only got off because I moved to Florida for a year. But, but there's some, you know, when we got these new airport authority members, one of the things I wanted to sit down with them and ask them, okay, uh, how good are you at shoveling and sweeping the floor? And, checking the gas and doing all the things that we volunteered to do. So this was a volunteer airport authority. Nobody got paid anything. So just, just to go back to... Well, let's the, go back to my original. Well, let's, because let's, this we're talking about conflict of interest. We are oh, talking about it. Okay, just to give That's me what I'm that. leading up to, and I didn't get right. a real is, chance to is, answer Mr. Powell's question. As Mr. Powell said, and the law currently states, and it's, you can look it up, that the conflict of interest, if it's approved by the probate judge, and there's documentation I think has to be submitted, then it's not an issue, per se, as far as a violation of the law. And well, what, if you what as a public let, resource, let me finish, please. Let me you're, finish. You're just stating it. Let me finish, okay? Okay, all right. All right. And what he was going to propose is that both <coughs> probate judges, both the Hart County probate judge and the Franklin County probate judge, 
if they gave their blessings to this and there was no issue there, that's what he's proposing to do. The law is already there in, in the current statute that if, if there's a conflict of interest, if it goes to the probate judge, and there's, well, I can't remember the exact code section, but we've had to deal with this on another issue that it's not a problem, it's not a violation of the law. The fact that that did not happen is what raised the flag. And Alan, if I'm, I'm wrong, tell me. Keep talking. I mean, that's, I mean yeah. and well, that's where we're trying to go with this. Mr. Dorsey, it really, it's really immaterial. Let me finish, please. Okay. okay. Please quit cutting me off, okay? No, well, you had stopped, and I thought you were so, finished. No, he asked me to I keep talking, that. okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to clarify this so we can see. We're not going to debate the issues in the past. The issues in the past are in the past. We're moving forward, with you or without you, okay? I, I am, I'm moving forward, too. Okay, so that's what the whole purpose of this meeting is tonight. It's not to belabor what's happened in the past. It is to get uh, an, an agreed-upon change in the legislation so that both Hart County and Franklin County can move forward. And then after we get this and we agree to where we're at, then we're going to talk about the audit that we both, both boards want to do. That's what the purpose of this meeting was for tonight. And that's why I said that. If the situation had been identified and the probate judge had signed off on it, then this situation that happened before, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. So by putting both probate judges in, as, as Representative Powell is going to discuss, then there's an added layer of you know, oversight. So since it's a joint Hart Franklin, Franklin Hart Airport Authority, that would basically provide the extra layer of oversight. And I think that's what most of us are okay with. I, I think all the Hart County Commissioners are okay with that. I don't know about the Franklin County Commissioners, but we want to see this fixed. We want to move on. We, economic development and this airport and the airport authority is a key part to both counties' livelihood. And we don't need to be belaboring this and arguing this out. We've already, both counties have already got a black eye of what's happened in the past. We're behind that. We're moving forward. And, uh, you can't move forward until you figure out what happened. Yeah. We know what happened, sir. Well, the point I was trying to make there was to circle it's, back around to why, having come from other airports in Georgia and what has happened, very similar to what you guys are going through, egos and airplanes go together. Every airport <laughs> has these issues, and they're going to continue to have them. But one of the reasons the state legislature put in there, stakeholders, owners of property, can't be on the board, including the airport manager, is the conflict of interest. You guys are kicking the can to the judicial. They're supposed to be referees. Why give them more authority than the Constitution and this? God it's knows there's there. more of that going on today. It's already there. The statute is already there about conflict of interest. Okay. This okay. matter has been investigated by law enforcement. There was no criminal intent found. We're not talking about criminal so, intent. We're talking I'm about talking. conflict of interest. Exactly. And how do we move forward so, so that we don't repeat the same mistake? What, that's what we're here for. Okay. So I, that's I, what I, I'm trying to tell I you. I've got a question for you. Okay. I've got a question for you. The, I was one of those people that was inter that were interested in purchasing the hand or getting a ground lease. And I brought it up before this was settled. And I was summarily shut down. I was not allowed to bid on a hangar, not allowed to offer to rent a hangar, that decision, and to quote was, that issue is settled. Okay, I can understand being late to the party. Okay, I can understand missing out on an opportunity. But the idea that you can transfer a piece of public property to another individual, a corporation, or an entity, without having it go up for bid, or having it go be at least presented to the public as a, as a opportunity to take advantage of a good deal, a bad deal, or whatever, when that wasn't presented, that seems to me like that's, there's something wrong there because that allows the people that are on the board, the manager, <coughs> whoever, the judge, doesn't matter who it is, to take advantage of personal connections. Basically, being, you know, I've been in aviation for over 40 years, and I've seen small airports do a lot of things which were not appropriate because somebody knew somebody and scratched somebody's back, and I understand how the system works. But at the same time, when you're trying to locate a hangar and you've got equipment that needs to be hangar and you're not given the opportunity to at least get on the field that's where I see the problem and it's going forward if there's not some resolution 
and giving it to a judge is not a resolution. That's just somebody that can go in and rubber stamp whatever's decided before. You need to have a manager, paid or, pro or, or volunteer, that makes the decision, that's accountable to a board, that can say you're right or you're wrong. And then that's where it's at. And then if there's appeal and somebody doesn't like it, they can sue and go to a judge. But you don't need to, to kick this over to a probate judge. You need a manager on the field that, that makes decisions, the board supervises, and if they don't like what he does, you fire him and you get somebody else. But you gotta give people out there that have interest in aviation and need facilities that are willing to give a county money or to rent a piece of property that's there and a chance to get on the field. Because if you don't, then what happens is we're in Anderson. And Anderson County gets my money. And that's money that could the, be coming to Hart County. The, the, the airport authority, manager. if they want to have a manager, that's up to the authority members. Well, that's, it's, that's not, not, it's not up to these boards of commissioners to manage an authority. The law and, and, and I'm not, I'm not authorities are, are very clear. Once those members are appointed, it's basically hands off from the governing yeah, authorities. I understand that. But, but somebody, somebody has to be able to, to wave the big BS flag and say, wait a minute, we have people waiting in line for hangers. We have people that need facilities. And when that list is completely ignored, and these deals go back and forth. You can understand why people would be upset. You can understand why people think that there's some, something going on under the table. Because it's like, when, you, when you're sitting there and you're waiting in line for months and months and months that a hangar comes open and it's just seven months later and there's no phone calls going on, we're gonna have a hangar menu? And that's, that's an authority <laughs> operation. Decision. Okay, now you're throwing and, it back to the airport authority. No, that's I mean, what the they're there for. They, they we're we're they, here to discuss what are we going to do if we're going to do anything suggesting. about the conflict so of interest. That's what I'm You've got to have if, a way if to get off the field to get on the field. If there's going to be an authority manager, in my opinion, that's up to the authority. I can it tell is, you, that's what I'm the Hart County Board of Commissioners is suggesting. not going to fund an airport authority manager or an airport uh, manager. Uh, you better yeah, know what you want to do, but my money's going to Anderson. And not, 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 it's not my choice. I would rather put my money in our county. Right. I live the funds have to come from the county. Tell them about what you want to do. Well, what, wait, so everybody knows so we can kind of get something. Go ahead. Go ahead, Thomas. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got a question. The commissioners of both counties are responsible for financing and making sure the airport is a productive, economical drive for the county. Mm -hmm. The commissioners of both counties are elected by the public. And I keep hearing that the commission has nothing to do with airport, other than point to people. Beg your pardon. I think we got everything to do with it. From the perspective, the public looks at us how the money is spent. Now you need we to take, read the state charter, Tom. That, uh, well, we, we, we need to fix this. The airport authority is kind of like in Washington, D.C. It is chartered by the state. Yeah, we need to fix this so, so we don't have this to happen what we're in the trying past to do. and we feel comfortable with it. But we're, all, we're losing our focus. We're here to talk about the enabling legislation and an amendment and that's what we're going to talk about if i'm going to chair this that's what we're going to talk about we're not going to talk about anything else and that's what we're here for there's no sense in wasting everybody's time and uh yeah i won't kind of go back to you that and that was your plan is is what i understood well, right joey uh, really i asked you a question mr powell and and it, it did get diverted i have to agree agree that it, it did and you're but, the one that calls part of the diversion so i'm asking you i ask a simple question to define what land swap was and that was where we were going and we did get diverted on that that's what i'm trying to it get this back you're trying to alter the legislation and i concur if the legislation is going to be written in order to prevent the privatization of a public resource okay the code for the state of Georgia clearly outlines how to dispose of public property. It is in the code. It states clearly how you go about doing it. And it addresses many different types of properties and ownership by the people on how you dispose of it. If we're not going to follow those rules on that, then you're going to create a problem. And when you mention land swap, 
I, I don't know what you're talking about when you say that. It's land leases, and then that lease may include the hangar. In this case that you're all referring to, it was two separate buildings. One of those buildings was bigger than the other, much larger square footage. It's much more valuable in its size, clearly just in its size. It was bringing in more money in the land lease when it was leased than the previous hangar was bringing in. And that hangar was then privatized by an individual. That cannot happen without following the proper procedure to do that. And this gentleman's right. It should have been brought up for bid, should have been made public. And on the day that the airport authority decided to do that, it wasn't even a published agenda item that it was going to happen. It just came up. And the next thing you know, the decision was made to do it. And it continued on into finally, now a private individual owns something that used to belong to the public. And the procedure to do that was not followed. I'm with Mr. Dorsey. Alter the legislation, but make sure that type of event will not happen again, because it will. And in reference to what this gentleman is saying, <laughs> you give humans and not human beings an opportunity to be dishonest, they'll usually take it. They'll take advantage of the situation for their own purpose. Privatization of a public resource for a personal or private res uh, gain, financial or otherwise, is a question that should be is the question that should be addressed and how not to allow that to happen again. <clears throat> yeah. Mr. Addison, you've been raising your hand. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple of things. One of the things that Alan's combating are sixteen legislatively enabled air force in the state of Georgia. Between Jason Maggot and I, we probably talked to every one of them. They all are operating pretty much the same as we are. And what Alan's trying to do, if I understand correctly, is not run this through the legislation, but try to find a workaround where you don't interrupt these 16 other Air Forces. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. So that's why we're here tonight, am I right? That's I mean, exactly I can right. argue the hangar, the ground lease <coughs> change as good as anyone. Believe me, I've had more experience at it than anyone in this room. Anyone want to doubt that? But at the end of the day, we're here for two things. One, to discuss the workaround of the enabling legislation, and two, how to get this airport up. And to, and to your point, the Habersham County Airport is not an enabling legislative body. It is, in fact, owned by the county, and the county supports that airport. Hart Franklin County Airport is a $3,750 stipend that each county provides each year. And with the Franklin County, it was swapped out for services in kind. So the airport is pretty much self supporting does anyone want to argue that fact? Well, well Franklin County well, provides $100,000 in excuse, slush money excuse, every six years. We're not here to argue the fact. We're here to fix the fact. I agree with you. Okay. That's what we're here for, to fix it. This man right here needs to fix it. If it takes legislation to fix it, that's what it needs to be done. When, when it said no wrongdoing was intended, I'd have to accept that. But I'd say there were some wrongdoings done and you didn't get that from the DA. The DA has not told me that there was no intent, fact, or wrongdoing. Because we don't know the investigation yet. But let's fix it through that, uh, Alan Powell. And I know, I agree with, excuse me, volunteer manager? Volunteer manager? Mr. Adamson? Sir? I'm talking. Volunteer manager is great. It is good to be a volunteer. All of us volunteer. But when you got an economical drive up there that the two counties could put a manager to apply for the federal grants to make sure that they lose it. Excuse me. No, I'm not make, make sure make sure everything is run proper and that manager reports to the commissioners who are responsible for tax dollars that goes to that, that's the only way you can fix it in my book. You really need to read enabling legislation, but we're doing, the airport authority is doing that today with the grants. You know, actually, the FARs are very, there's an advisory survey about airports and, and what an airport manager does, and we're not doing what the airport manager does. There's a lot of things that airport manager does uh, that are not being done right now. We're talking about and the time, so. an airport manager ought to be reporting directly to the board and not be a member of the board. I agree with that. And um, one of the reasons the state legislature has put into that enabling legislation that you can't be a stakeholder at the airport is things like 
Anybody here want to take a guess what Franklin Hart County is going to look like in 50 years? <laughs> 50 years. But one of the things the board did was set a lease rate fixed for 50 years. So it has a I've list. never heard of such a thing in my we're, life. We're not going to belabor the past anymore, okay? If I'm chairing this, you're going to be We're talking order. about today, the present. We're talking you about... You are my representative, sir. I'm a, I'm a citizen of Hart County. That's fine. But we're here to talk about changing this list, enabling legislation. We're not going to belabor the point of what we've had in the past, okay? I've said that many times tonight. That's all I'm trying to say. If you okay, can, you can read about it in the paper, though. That's you fine. Correct. You can write letters to the editor all day long. I'll help you. I will. Get to. Trust if you me. Don't, if you don't put out a fire right now, it spreads throughout the whole hangar base. You know, you, you, you can't have, have a special set of rules that go into place for people that were connected or whatever, however they got it. No, no, no aspersions cast aside. But some people get sweetheart deals, and then you, when that comes to light, then you can't just say, oh, we're just going to bury this under the legislation when we rewrite the law because we don't want to look. I thought we just had a big election a couple years back about not looking at something that people did in the past. You have to make sure that it's transparent, that it works, and that when things are done wrong, they're corrected. And That's the way you feel the confidence. We're, we're trying to fix the saying, issue. We're not going to now. talk about that anymore. We're not going to talk about things that happened in the past. Sure, I beat my wife up yesterday, and she's laying over here with a broken nose and everything, but I'm not going to talk about that because, you know, that was yesterday. I don't even want to talk about today because I don't want to talk about it. You have to get the issues resolved so that as you go forward in the future, people can have confidence in what you're doing. And by enacting enabling legislation, that doesn't address some way to dispose of public property, which laws are already in place. If you don't put those rules into effect, you're just you're just ignoring you're ignoring a rotten carcass in the closet. And the and the problem that you have is is when you have have you, you lay in another lay in the judge to put in probate judges to resolve all this for us. Let the throw that a monkey on their back. Well. The procedures are already codified in law. How do you get rid of state property? How do you get rid of public property? That's already, it's already, there's procedures for that. And all we have to do is enable the board, the airport authority, to use those procedures that are in place. You've got any land you want to get rid of? Put it up for bid. It's, it's, it's already there. You don't need a judge to make that decision. If you follow the regulations that are in place, you're good to go. That regulation is already in place, sir. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you follow that, it was not followed. That's right. Okay, so that's what I'm that's saying. Right. All you if, have to if, do is have the airport. If there was an issue with the disposal of property, that's not something that I was involved in or I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just saying that the, the airport authority needs legal counsel as right. well to until, guide uh, them. Until that's addressed, until that becomes a mm -hmm. policy of the airport affordable board, you'll never get rid of the carcass in the closet. Because the, things have to be done that be transparent and open so everybody is on a level playing field and you don't have the perception of some people getting a sweetheart deal when other people can't even get a bid. And that's all, that's my point. Just a crazy, stupid question. Is it law that you use a probate judge for this? I mean, there's all kinds of judges. Why, why was the, why, is it standard that you it's use the probate? in the statute. It's already stated in law that this is a method of doing okay. it. Yeah. Well, and Mr. Powell, um, one thing you might not know, another thing, you mentioned something about helping you out with things you might not know, and, and I apologize if you already know this, but when this uh, property was privatized, it took a few weeks before the decision to go through with it and it actually occurring. In that period of time, both boards of commissioners were aware of what happened either through gossip or conversation or a phone call that you know this happened at the authority meeting. So when we get on the discussion about as whether or not who is actually overseeing, I understand what Mr. Bridges is talking about, and I understand what Mr. Dorsey is saying, you know, once this autonomous body is formed, then it's hands off. But when you do become aware that there is something that might not be right with it and you fail to act on it, then that is a little bit disgusting that someone in a position to act on it doesn't do it until now it's consummated through warranty deeds and through the proper legal way 
and, and it's done. And now you try to say, well, gee whiz, now we know it wasn't right. How, how do we go back? Well, well it's, that's a difficult thing to do. My point is, and, and back to what Mr. Dorsey was saying about oversight, maybe it is an autonomous organization, an autonomous entity that works on its own, and they don't have any control about what happens. But the fact is, for the taxpayers of Hart and Franklin County, when the Board of Commissioners recognize something doesn't seem right, they ought to act on it, and they did not. So I'm stating they did not act on it when they knew. And I don't know that you need additional legislation to fix that. You just need people on a board that will stand up and do, when they find something's not being done right, just do the right thing. I mean, you don't need to have a new law, or put a new rule or regulation in place. They're already there. You just need people that will, will sit here and say, wow, we're, giving, we're, we're, we're selling a hanger to a guy that's got a hanger and it's there. And you, got people so dog. you know, it's like you don't need a new law for that. You need to have the people to say, this didn't work. Let's fix it. You worked with Senator Madden on the legislation. There had to have been a reason. I believe you did. Is that, am I misstating that? Senator Madden? Madden it, was it Eddie Madden, the senator for Georgia that signed the legislation mm -hmm. over with the government? The guy that created the Franklin Heart Authority. You're right. That was done with a template. Um, basically yeah. the same template that yeah. created so many of these other smaller airports. Right, right. And, and, and being aware of that, I mean, I think you guys were pretty smart in the way you did the wording. I mean, there was a reason behind it. I mean, go back to the history in your head and go, why did we word it the way we did? And I think the point he's making is that the, the, the law is there. It tells you what you shouldn't do. We're trying to work around it so we can do it, even though the law well, already says. I might can. make observation. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of warm air laundry about yeah. what's happening. I'm trying to analyze where the problem is. The problem is that, you know, you've got an airport. You've got two counties that appoint members of that airport. And at some point, most of the people that have an interest in the airport be folks who have an interest in aviation and flying. They seem to me to be the best qualified folks. I don't know. Somebody made this issue a while ago, said something about egos and whatever. <laughs> Egos in aviation. Yeah, not, not surprised so in I that. Have guesses, you know. egos are but uh, it seems to me that the whole problem needs to be how are you going to allow the folks fairly and honestly mm -hmm. that are on a board to have access to do business or to get a lease or, mm -hmm. or in this case, a swap or whatever it was. You know, I understood everything I heard was that, you know, that that, you know, that the swap that uh, Mr. Mr. Addison made, that he actually didn't come out with a profit out of this. And I have nothing other than what I was told. Mm -hmm. And I'm not getting into that. I ain't, whatever y'all got going, that's between y'all, brother. But <clears throat> my whole issue is how do we repair this so that those people who are on the airport authority, if they want to do business, or if they want to have a hangar, or they want to do a ground lease, or whatever it may be, there's a proper way of doing it. And there should be a proper way of doing it. And I don't think this is rocket science. God is my witness, I wish I had never brought this current law in. I'm not, in re I'm not reinventing a wheel. This is already statute that it would be posted with probate judges. But that's beside the point. I mean, we can put a certain process in right. in the local act. A point on that isn't that he didn't make a profit. The point is the airport could have made a profit had he gone up for bid. That's the bigger point. Well, the airport the other, up a sixty-five thousand dollar profit off of the exchange. You're, you're who here. knows what I would have paid for it? I probably would have paid a hundred grand for that. Who knows? I should, have ran, I should have ran for president when well, I got 36. Yeah, and the whole thing is it didn't go up through the normal procedure, but, normal process of disposing of the government of property. It didn't go through that process. Right. That process exists. And the charter, one of the things in the charter, the point that I was trying to make by that long-winded circle, was it says you put people on the board, yes, they have an aviation interest, that's important. But they don't need to be people that own property at the airport because they have a financial interest 
you may have some stakeholders that are there. I give check rides there all the time. I don't own a damn thing there. I don't even have an airplane there. I don't um, know. A Mr. Single. Flowers was a naval aviator and, and a naval officer. He doesn't have an airplane that I know of. I don't know so, of a single authority outside of aviation where the people that have the most interest are not able to be a part of it. The Downtown Development Authority is generally comprised of business owners in the downtown because they care about their downtown, right? This is the exact same situation as that type of authority. Why should someone be precluded from serving and hopefully helping the whole airport authority it benefit? Be because the Georgia state law says so, and the reason it says so is this airport board is autonomous and accountable virtually to nobody. That's why the Georgia law says so. It keeps people from financially benefiting from that autonomy. It's a public airport. It's not an airport that belongs to the individuals and own hangars at the airport. That's why the law is written that way. It's not downtown Franklin County or... I think uh, if you exclude people from doing that, you're not going to have... Uh, you're not going to have a healthy or vibrant airport. You're going to have it. It's going to be people that don't know much about aviation. You don't have to. You don't have to. Occasional person. You don't. You don't have to exclude people from from owning property, but you, but you have to follow the procedures available when there is property to be disposed of. I don't care if you own a hangar over here and there's another hangar that comes up for for a lease and you want to buy it and you're on the board. I don't care as long as it goes up for public bid. I'm not. I'm not addressing that issue. Well, not, but I, 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 maybe I have a balance right. of the but, two. But say, say you got. It goes up for public bid. I don't care who buys the hangar. May the best man win. But when you don't even get to go get the plate, well, that's a problem. You know, we got to get here where we can fix this issue. And, and I'm not against for people with hangers and airplanes. I think everybody agrees. Aviation, as you point out to me, is uh, is important to have every people on there. But let's just give you an example. You got authority here. You got the majority of the people on the authority that set the rules and regulations and say we set our land lease per square foot at 12 cents a square. Okay? We got a plane, we think that's fair. How do they arrive at 12 cents a square foot is what is the going rate? When I check with other airports, it's 26 cents a square foot. So does that put a picture that they are enhancing themselves if they just pay a small land lease at 12 cents? Who's the loser here? The people in the counties. Who's the winner? The people that saying we're going to pay 12 cents a square foot rather than 26 square foot. So I'm all in favor of people there, but you need to have a manager to, that saying keeping up with this, keeping up with this data, and saying, gentlemen, 26 cents is the going rate, and that's what what this guidelines and so forth. You got to have a manager that will come in and talk to Mr. Dorsey and and report to the commission, and come in to Mr. Uh, Michelson here. This is how the airport going. We asked for we asked for a financial report. Last January, monthly. Was it yeah. Did you ever get a financial report? Yeah, it's, it's on our website. I didn't it's get a, a financial it's in the report. It's on our website. I didn't see so, a financial I mean, we, report. We received a financial report. Oh, it's, it's, it's on our website. You're not going to have a generic 12 cents or 20 cents or $1.50 a foot in the state of Georgia because Peachtree to Cab Airport is a lot more valuable than Franklin County, which may or may not be more than Tuscola, which may, so it's not going to be a generic, and it's going to be based on local activity. I'd, I'd like to also add that we've added, when we updated those leases, we added a a part in there to allow for inflation in the coming years, too. That was not in there. That rate was set long ago by previous administration. Um, and I've been sitting here trying to keep quiet, but I, I, I do want to address a couple of things. When this lease swap, and we've gotten way off the point subject, I agree, Chairman Dorsey. When this lease swap came up, the first thing I said, I was on the authority at the time, I said, 
it has to be legal. Whatever we do, I want it vetted by attorney. It was vetted by an attorney that handles authority properties. He's been doing it for over 30 years. That it was legal. It's since been vetted by two more attorneys that both say it was legal. That was done. Now, if we want to do something different in the future, I'm fine with that. We can set the rules however we want to do it. Um, also, as far as the conflict of interest, this was established. This authority was established in 96. I believe, 1996, yeah. and pilots, lease, leases, hangar owners have served on this authority since that day. It has just recently become a question, and this is a rhetorical question because we all, know, most of us know the answer. Why is it an issue now? I don't want to hear an answer to that. We know what it is. Uh, that lease swap know. is legal, but a property swap is the issue I think that you've been referring to. He used the term lease swap. Um, you can swap, but you can rewrite a lease for someone. You can negate one and write a new one, so that's not really a clear response to what's legal or not. So we're back to why we're here tonight. You know, I might make an observation. You know, I think I've heard enough about uh, what's expected. Uh, you know, I think what should be expected is that there needs to be language that would deal with if a member of the authority has any type of uh, interaction with the airport, whether it be lease, purchase, or anything else. There needs to be a pathway so it could be done so that it's transparent and open. Mm, absolutely. I mean, that's, you know. Well, the application in Franklin County for an airport authority position for appointments specifically ask the candidate, is there anything that might be of, uh, considered a conflict of interest that the board would need to know about? Well, if the board were evaluating the applications and someone said, well, I do, I, I own a hangar there, that might raise a flag to make an inquiry to that individual. Well, before appointment, do you understand this or that with regard to a possible conflict of interest? But whether the Board of Commissioners look at those applications and make an evaluation on that, another question. But, I mean, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but I've actually heard at commissioner meetings I've attended where an individual would say, I haven't even looked at the application yet for, for a particular appointee. And to me, I, I was just pretty unbelievable. You, you have to look at the application and vet the person that you're trying to put on it. Furthermore, when you, someone makes a comment about people not having an aviation background, I'll just be frank with you. When a position becomes available, either to be appointed by the IBA or the individual commissioners at the individual uh, counties, look at the type of advertising that goes on. It's a pretty important position, and I am sure there are people in both counties that have backgrounds in aviation that might not even know that that position is available. I would have never known it five years ago, but a member of the airport authority mentioned it to me because I just happen to have a background in aviation, and I thought, well, wow, that might be an interesting thing to do. But whether it's advertised in the paper or put out publicly long enough so that those particular personnel assets can be aware of it, well, it's kind of laughable because it isn't. So we really don't know what's in the county as far as people go and who could be performers uh, on the airport authority. It's not really advertised. And your point yeah. is that there are people in the county that very well might have aviation experience. They just don't own an airplane today. And as he was saying, well, you're right. There should be people that have some knowledge about aviation and managerial experiences in order to be on the authority. But if we don't advertise and put down some sort of requirements, I don't mean to sound like I'm being smart like when I said your and your point, but you're talking about the functions of the board, two separate boards of commission. You're talking about the functions of the airport authority. Their duty no, well, is I'm to just, appoint by the by That's right. The they have to have a cadre of personnel to choose from. Now, ever have they choose to appoint? That's true. That's, that, you got two separate counties. So, so, so Mr. Powell, this, what you're proposing, this is a this is something that's provided for in state law that provides an external review for people who serve on the authority who may have some kind of tra business transaction with the airport Probably authority, a legitimate and, one, and to make sure that it's normal. Law that we have overview this 
but you know that doesn't okay. mean we got to do that. We can put it straight into the charter, and we can do a prescriptive process. But using that probate judge gives you the over the oversight sure. on these decisions. Sure, that's the transparency to it. I mean, it's already part of the law. You know, but that, since it's a joint it's county done. thing, you would have two probate judges mm -hmm. looking at not one. I think an extra layer of, of, of judicial oversight is just just adding more fuel to the fire. I really think that you need to have a restrictive process that says, here's the way it works. This is, if you're going to be on the board, you own property, you know, you may have to recruit yourself for some votes. But it needs to be specific to what we're doing so that everybody understands, instead of just Maybe someday in the future, a couple guys get together, they work out a sweetheart deal, they send it up to the judge, they say, hey, they say, hey judge, this is all real good. The judge is going to go, okay, whatever you guys say, that's what he's going to do. Because he doesn't know. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have but insight as to what's going on. However, that goes back to the good old boy network. Well, it does. It does. And, <coughs> and that doesn't work in this particular situation. Well, I've got, what I'm you, saying is that if, but if, if, if you have a hired airport manager who will be held accountable that's even better okay. that's even better I you agree. have to have somebody on staff who will be held accountable and, that's, that's even better. and when you but have that, volunteers there's only one fallacy to that whoever the airport manager is is going to be responsible to the board members exactly and he so will report board to the board members and he will be it'll held be the, accountable and then it'll be the and authority you've got, members and yeah. you've got one individual who goes to the authority, you've got one individual who may or may not, depending on the decision of the airport authority, go to the probate judges to present the case instead of having two five-year-old kids screaming to two different probate judges, this is what I want, Mommy, Daddy, and this is what he said, and this is what he said. Well, that's you've got one individual who it will be held accountable for the decision that is made. Well, that's, that's the, uh, the ultimate remedy would be to go to a probate judge if, in fact, sure. ultimately. My name is Bo Rowland. I've, I've recently been appointed to the, the airport authority from Franklin County. And just, I'm, I apologize for stepping in right in the middle of this, but uh, as far as my aviation background, I... Uh, I spent 18 years in corporate aviation. I moved down here from North Carolina. I flew for NASCAR for 15 out of my 18 years. I managed the flight department out of Hickory, North Carolina, and I'm not currently involved in the aviation community, but I spent about six years of my... You got a pilot's license? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, I, fig I'm, I figured as much. I'm, I'm ATP rated. Um, um, type rated in the Lear, you Lear own, Jets, Do you own your own plane now? Sir. Do you own your own plane now? I do not. Do you anticipate at some point that you might, while you're on that board, you might want to have a hangar space or anything? Not if I can help it. Hey, Bo, can I ask you a question? <laughs> Ma'am? Can I ask you a question? Yes, I'm glad that you said who you were. My question is, 14 months ago, I went to a meeting. The meeting with Eddie, it was... Um, said that he could do the swap for the land lease or whatever. And we all wanted to to have a time to buy or just something to talk about that. And they wouldn't let us. So at that time, that was 14 months ago, in October 2019. Since that time, Eddie built a new hangar, which is in the past. We don't talk about the past. He's got his new hangar. The old hangar at this time, 14 months ago, has any lease money come to their Airport Authority from that hangar? To my knowledge, no. I've only been I've only been seven okay, for about no. three months. Okay, so no, no. Ted is on the list. It's number one. My husband and I are on the list for number two for those hangers. If they're doing it the right way, and we have the list up there, how come Mr. Kesey hasn't been called? In 14 months, I don't know when Eddie moved out. You said July. It took you on um, eight months to get into your new hangar. July is about that. Okay. I'm pretty sure. And it got I'm approved. Not, I'm, not sure I'm, I'm talking Eddie. Got approved in October. Oh, don't let me get in your way. It got approved. Thank Sorry. you. Got approved to move in 
you did the building, you tore it down, you did it pretty quickly. Because we had an airplane in that old hangar, we had to move it out. So my question is, how about all that lease money that could have been coming to the airport that they're missing? And that's today current. And why aren't we able to get that hangar if it's been empty all this time or someone in there using it free? And should they go back and pay back hangar fees? Is that, that fair? Has actually been paid through the end of the year. That lease has been paid through the end of the year on that. Well, on ground lease, but now please hangar. let me finish. Go right ahead, finish up the line. There was a decision made to not move forward to doing anything with that hangar because of the investigation with the authority. I've talked to Mike, we've talked and said, we don't need to do anything until all this is hashed out. In case we have to go and put something back, we need to just sit tight until all this is hashed out. Frankly, I'm sick of it. I've been dealing with it since it started. I'm the secretary treasurer. I spend about a half a day every day dealing with airport business, and I'm ready to move forward. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of back the bickering, the fighting. What we did, what, whether right or wrong, it's in the past. Let's move forward. We're trying to fix it, whether it be through legislation or getting things approved by a probate judge. I'm good with it. Would love to have a manager. This authority, this airport, is expensive to run. We do not have the funds to pay for a manager. You're not going to get a volunteer manager to come and be accountable for all of that and not be paid. So we, we're doing the best we can. Mike Ward puts in thousands of hours on a tractor working on buildings down there. If he tells you that that hangar was in bad shape, I saw that hangar. It was in bad shape. No disrespect, Mr. Bridges. The walls were covered that night so you couldn't see all the rock. That's not the point. And, and again, we, we're debating what kind of shape it was in. That hangar had to come back. Eddie was going to tear down, and favoritism or not, I'm not, I'm not getting into that. His, he was going to tear down his hangar to build a, 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 a bigger hangar. Mike is the one that went to him and said, look, you're going to tear one down. This one's got to go anyway. Let's, let's move on this one and move and get it, forth, get it done. So that's what happened. Now, was it right or wrong? It's behind us. Let's move forward. Let's stop all this. I, this has been going on over the past year. The, the, the dickering, I call it rock throwing. The dirty politics, I'm just going to call it like it is, has been happening. I've talked with, I've talked with Chairman Powell. I'm not Chairman Powell. Representative Powell thought with uh, most of the commissioners on both boards to try to give them the whole picture of the story that's going on. And be glad to sit down anytime and want y'all one on one and go through this whole story. We don't have time to do it tonight. So no one can leave that hangar. Not not yet. We want we want to get a resolution where we can move forward. We want that hangar. We Who want are you talking about hangar. that's been bickering about it? Because none of us have talked to you. I, we, well, I sat in front of a DBI investigator. Okay, but that's not bickering. That's a federal go or government investigation. That's not bickering. That's him doing his job. And I, and I keep hearing calls that are being made. I've actually, downright, some non-truths are being passed along. And I'm not going to get into that either tonight. It's just, it's just not the place to do it. We can do it. If you want it, Bill, I'll be glad to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We can talk about it. Uh, I don't want to air all that out here. Uh, but a lot of a lot of mistruths have been passed along. A lot of misinformation has been passed along. I don't have a hanger. I'm a volunteer. I don't have any vested interest in the, in that place to tell you but anything but the truth. And I will tell you, I inherited a mess. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm working to get it straight back. Can, I, so can I, I answer any other questions without putting my foot in my mouth about existing <laughs> state law? <laughs> or does anybody have any... <laughs> Any suggestion? I think I've got the gist. I'm a fairly quick study. Can, can you tell us what the process would be? How, you you would introduce that in the next legislative session, and how how, amend, how does that work? I would amend the enabling legislation for the Franklin Hart County Airport Authority and put specifics in there that would outline a, a pathway for. <clears throat> for a process to dispose, trade, or for the airport to do business with members, if they so feel, but it's gotta be transparent and specific of how it's done. Yeah. 
Now, as far as the other part of this, it's past five o'clock. Whatever Franklin and Hart County want to do about an airport manager, quite frankly, they just need to go ahead and figure out what it is and they need to cut a check to the airport authority because that's the duty they've got. There's a reason we have quasi <laughs> entities and that's to keep meddlesome politics from boards and elected folks from dealing with the transfer. <laughs> Hospitals, <laughs> airports, <laughs> You know, there's a reason for that. Is it, I would suggest that while they're doing it, they also, if they got money to do that, then also save some so that you can start doing an audit that should go back several years. Yes. Now, can I ask a question? My understanding is it was only a $2,000 discrepancy that came up on an audit. How much is an audit going to cost? Bill, may I just that, that was only for the preceding 12 months. There was a three thousand dollar fuel discrepancy. Right. The the rest of the audits wasn't taking place. The audits on may I please not go first. <coughs> the audits uh, on the uh, uh, the grants that we've got. There's no audit on the grants. Uh, there's four about four point one million dollars worth of grants. Right. And uh, it obligated the airport a couple hundred thousand dollars. There's a lot of questions over that because it wasn't approved by the airport authority. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not then, then there was the fact that a contract expired that was 100% paid for by the feds, but the previous administration allowed that contract to expire without renewing it, which then indebted the airport authority to another $125,000. Yeah, only point I was going to make about the audit is we're only talking two or three thousand dollars. You're going to spend way more than that finding out nothing. So you're talking about four hundred thousand for the airport. So it was roughly three thousand, I think, for the twelve. They did the twelve month audit. Yeah. What's that? It was roughly three thousand yeah. dollars to do the twelve yeah. month audit. So, so and there's so still further back. Our, the auditor told us he said. There's so many ways between when the fuel Spend is purchased and then good money after that. that and he said it'll cost you a lot more than that. He said, I don't see anything that gives me cause for concern with this because fuel is inherently hard to track depending on when the inventory is taken and when the receipts come in. It's not difficult at all. You just need somebody on site on a daily basis to stick those tanks. Check them for water. It's automated now. And well, it very well may be automated. Yeah. However, a manual stick of that tank and a manual drain of whatever water may be in those tanks from humidity and, and uh, uh, it, it needs to be done on a daily basis. This time of year, no, not necessarily. There's Maybe every other day. two to three days is fine, but in the summertime, it needs to be done on a daily basis. We, we can suck five gallons of water out of a 10,000 gallon uh, uh, jet fuel tank on a daily basis. And, and that's been done, and to your point, we believe that may be where part of the discrepancy and came from, the fuel that's being It very well may be, but yeah. unless you have someone on site who is accountable for those losses and otherwise, you won't know. You will not know. And I apologize, ma'am, for not answering your question yeah. earlier. Got kind of mixed up. I agree with these gentlemen. The 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 discrepancies or the issues that have happened in the past need to be settled before we can worry about any disposition of the property. So is someone using that hanger right forward. now free? Someone to my hanger? knowledge, no. No one's in that hanger. Yeah, in that hanger, some the position of airport manager needs something to tank. Doing all that right now. So he's using the hanger free? The ground lease has been paid up in the I know, but I'm, I'm not talking about ground That's ground lease. We're talking about the hanger. So he's using it free? And, I mean, I'd like to know what's going on with that thing this position. That would be if you want to So because he's airport manager, he gets to use that hanger free? Right now, he does till we get this position out. Mm -hmm. And this is all oh, settled. Nice. He does get free though. Okay. Can I ask a question? You said the lease has been paid. Yes, sir. So, has anybody 
using it for free because of leasing pay, right? That's right. So they both free use of it, in my understanding. Well, she said land, I think you said land lease. Land lease. Land lease. Land lease. What about the building? Building is not getting any rent right now. Okay. And I misunderstood. I made that decision not to do it to all this stuff. I misunderstood. Yeah, the building can be separate from the land lease. And there's no revenue coming from the building. I got a question. Oh, we're still going with the probate judges. Are you looking at me when you ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That'd I think you, I was really draft up something. Uh, I think I've got some ideas with some things drafting. It may or it may not be. Uh, my, my question concerns if, if you have to go to both probate judges, what happens if one says yea and the other says nay? Does they say? What Does do it do take that? place? I'm not going to throw the monkey range in the whole thing. I, I that's exactly don't what you're doing. doing. <laughs> 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 it's a that's damn that's good that's question, though. Okay. okay, if they don't concur, it's not going to happen. That's why you need a prescriptive solution to the problem. It needs to be spelled out very simply so everybody knows the rules, everybody can play by the rules, and if somebody violates the rules, you can say, hey, that's not right, and fix it right then. I got another concern. Uh, Section 3, Franklin Park Airport Authority, if you read the, the uh, <clears throat> legislation, uh, Section B, it says two from Franklin County, two from Hart County, one from Franklin IBA, and one from the Industrial Development Authority of Hart. I don't think our Industrial Development Authority exists anymore, does it? It's, it's Industrial Development Authority. Get them the IBA. I understand it, but it, it don't say that in here. It says Industrial Development. That needs to be changed while you make it. Yes, sir. That's all. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> okay. We good on before we go on with that? <clears throat> oh, I think I've got a good idea where it needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to the audit. Um, I know there's been some discussion. If y'all don't need me, then I'm going to leave y'all. We appreciate it. Thank you. Very Thank you. America. Merry Christmas. said is I, it is my plans to draw out a prescriptive way that members of the airport authority if they wish to do business that is done with transparency and openness along and basically attract the normal laws of the state of Georgia. There you go. Let's get here. That's it. And is that going to be retroactive or from the state forward? It goes forward. You can't pass it. Okay. Can't pass the law that backs up. Merry Christmas, other friend. See you, brother. Yeah. See, thank you. Appreciate it, brother. Have a good one. So, moving on to the the audit that both boards have some interest in doing. Good to meet you, sir. I guess the first step for us would be, what do we want to do? Air as part of the audit. Yes. I'll throw out an idea. I think we ought to go out with an RFP on what we want to do, put it out for proposals. Then once we get that, put it out for bid and, and take an accounting firm that these are harder, Franklin counties used. That way we get a neutral party that's not involved. Either I'm in agreement with that. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. How far back do we want to go with it? I think that's what we just decided. Yeah, we'll go back to day one, or we. Yeah. What kind? We need some idea of the cost. The cost, for that. and that's why we can just put. Yeah, we'll we'll go back five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty years. Let me interject here, Joy. Uh, she I'm came here somewhere around. I'm thinking somewhere around. Right. Twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen. 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 Twenty to start from the beginning and run this thing through. And we already have reports on audits through Rustin and, Rustin and Associates up through 13. And after 13, 
our county clerk was actually given the information that she was acting as the, the treasurer of the airport authority. She was given the information to Rustin and the social. 14, 15, 16, and 17, my knowledge, and maybe 18. So they all, they all read a lot of information. That was who y'all choose as your auditors that will be good there and let it finish out. But uh, I don't think it needs to go all the way back, but I don't object to it. I mean, that's just my thoughts. We need to understand what the cost is so we can say, you know, do we want to pursue it? How far back do we want to go? Uh, the, the issue, one of the issues that I think we may run into is, is, and I don't know if all the documents are available now. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I'm just asking that question. <coughs> How far back do they go? I can. I can imagine. Uh, I'm not criticizing these uh, volunteers. I know what it is to be a volunteer. I appreciate these volunteers, but I imagine you will have a hard time finding every document that you need with so many different volunteers and so forth, and that's why I'm pushing for a manager to make sure you have somebody to put your finger on. But we'll wait and see if the audit can get, get that information. Yeah, could I ask, what what do you expect to gain from doing that? I mean, is there, are we gonna make a lot of money for the airport for a minute, or what are we gonna, what are we gonna gain from it? I think we've got to get reestablish a level of confidence that the finances are in, in order. I'm not saying that they are or they're not. I don't know for sure. But it's very troubling to me to know that there's discrepancies and there's times that audits haven't been done. The airport authority is a component of the county government authority and they should have their own independent audit every year. And I know that hasn't happened. And I think we owe that to the authority members so that they get a clean slate upon which to start on so that there's, we establish that break and we go forward. Going forward with an audit, I totally agree with it. Uh, let me give you one real simple example. We have a quality control thing. I was in charge of that for many years there. and <clears throat> That requires you to sump the gas every day because if an airplane leaves your airport, crashes, the first thing they do is they want to see your records on where you sump the gas. and. The reason you do that is to get all the water out of it. In order to accomplish that task, we lose from one to two gallons of gas every day. And if you find water, you might lose 20 gallons. So over a period of time, when you're talking about an audit, you can lose 30 gallons, well, you, you definitely lose 30 gallons of gas every month, but sometimes you can lose as much as 60 every month. So that can, turn into a $2,000 discrepancy pretty easy. Yeah, and the other thing, and I'll throw this out, you know, there was a mad scramble trying to get the finances in order with the airport authority and get a contractor paid and, and all that went on there. Um, how we get these grants and things with the, there's no record of them being voted on and that kind of thing. Um, I think we need to have a good, clear understanding. And, and the cost may be where it's not really feasible to do. And that's by just putting it out to an RFP and a, for an RFQ that gives us an opportunity to at least quantify the situation so we know what we got, okay. what we're doing. My, I guess my point is auditing what happened before is not going to do anything for what's going to happen in the future. If you want to have future audits and should have... Well, it should be an annual audit. I agree. Regardless, I mean, it's state law. State law. I, yes, I got a question, and, th and this is for the Hart County Board, because I know what the answer is for the Franklin County Board. Did y'all know everything that was going on with the airport authority before 2019? Uh, Nothing. Nothing. I think I can speak for our board. We didn't know what was going on at the airport. We never got anything. We didn't know anything that was going on. Well, your job was to appoint people to run the airport. That was what the airport authority did, and that's what the commissioner's job is. And if you don't like what they're doing, then when their appointment comes up, then you appoint somebody else. But that's the thing. We went 20 years before an appointment was ever made because it was never brought to the board. As an airport authority, you're supposed to notify the boards whenever appointments are up. 
We knew nothing from the airport authority. We, we didn't get any financial so, information or anything. I, mean, I, don't, see, I don't see an issue with doing the audits and going back however far we need to as long as it's it's feasible within, within, within the money-wise. So, Well, if you can accomplish something by doing that, I, I agree with you. You never know. learn from mistakes if you don't know you made them. So how far do we want to go back? We want to go back five years, ten. Maybe put out maybe Let's get the RFP and figure out the cost before we make a decision on how far back. We That's why I said we put together you know how far back we want to go and have it bid out. Yeah. For those that's two years for you, if you want to do it in two year increments. Yeah, I think I think they probably will want to know how many years they're going to yeah. have. Well, maybe, maybe we could do it five or six years, and then depending on what was found, decide if we wanted to go back further, and the, and you know weigh the cost of that, or or something along those lines. That at least establishes some common and a baseline foundation of where we're at. Yeah. But, let me ask a question. I think first uh, more than five when you use the term audit, kind of silly. And, I, and I'm not an accountant, but for me, it's just a layman. You're talking about numbers. But what I'm hearing here is we're actually talking about more than just numbers that came in and numbers that went out and the occurrences in between. We're talking about contracts, whether the board voted or didn't vote, and issues of that nature. Well, if, if that's a concern, then there should be a paper trail somewhere for that, and these auditors are not going to be just involved with whether the numbers add up correctly. They're going to have to have access to this paperwork, and they're going to have to know what it is they're looking for. Are the commission, are you all going to come up with a list of what it is they need to be looking for and what discrepancies might be out there? Or, or they're not going to know themselves. Again, it goes back to what data is available. And then an audit is going to look at your revenues, your expenses, your assets, your depreciation. We want a full-blown forensic audit on, the, on these finances. That's what our, our things are. Okay, for finances then. The whole shit money. I mean, money. we, we, we no. want a full-blown audit just like what would be done today required by law. It's going to give you a cash position. It's going to account for your depreciation. It's going to account for all your assets. Okay. Similar to the one Rushton gave us in 2013. The gate there. I haven't seen it. Wasn't that a generally recognized procedure and not an audit? I, just, just I, think, my, no, I think it was. Uh, I an think actual. Rushton did audits up through 13, 2013. I might be wrong, but I believe Rushton Associate did yeah, an annual call. I haven't seen it. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it was 2007 or 6, all the way up to 13. And it was an audit which included assets, depreciations, and that sort of thing. And, it, and if you look at it, it it'll tell the, the, the procedure or protocol that they use to make the analysis that they did. So if the people that do this this time don't use similar, then there's going to be a discrepancy between what one company found versus another company. It should be in line with what state law requirements are. Yeah. What, what Rustin did is called a compilation, not an audit, according to resident uh, expert. If we want to break out a component of it and just have that audit, that's, that's another thing. But if you're going to do an audit, you need to understand where all your capital is. You need to understand where your depreciation levels are, your current value of assets. You need to understand that whole gamut. Yeah. I agree. It says to establish what year we're going to go. And it's and it's the same the all your all grant, all you grant documentation, all your contract documentation, all is included in that audit. Yeah. And if you haven't seen those, those those other audits, I'd recommend. Yeah, I have a So we want to put it out for bid for five years, go back five years and see what we get? I think so. How about seven years that they had one in 2013? About a rushing or whatever that was. If you get five and then you find that a problem, you can go back. You can go back further if you have a discretion. I think seven years would do it. I mean, what's, what's, what's everybody thinking? Let's take it back seven years and see what we see. I'm fine with, I'm fine with that length, uh, but I will feel better about it when I find out what the cost is. I think that helped me make a decision about exactly how far to go back. Said, we want to look at it and put it out for bids for like maybe three years, then six years, then, or three, five, seven. Seven. three, five, seven. Yeah, maybe that, and that way we understand mm -hmm. what the true cost is. Okay. 
I'm fine with that. Everybody okay with that? They, they, yeah, the, the new auditor may draw from the previous audit. You can go all the way back to 13, right, right, so right here at the end of 2020. You know, and you also don't know if you're going to have the documentation available to be That's honest. correct. That's another question that we have. Yeah. 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 You've got economic yeah. fluctuations. And that will that be one thing that we're going to be getting. Does anybody yeah. have a copy of the 2013 audit report or compilation or whatever you want to come I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> yep. And I, we presented you all with the 2019 audit. Right. That's right. <clears throat> well, Joey, why don't y'all take the lead on that? Some of all the commissioners got doing that to Hart County would take the lead on advertising and so forth. I'm fine with it. How about the other commissioners from Franklin? What we'll do is mm -hmm. if everybody's okay with that, we'll, we'll get with Terrell, let him put it together, and we'll put it out for bid. Then once we get the bids in, uh, we'll get back together and then we'll go from there. Uh, we, uh, we both have already jointly agreed we'd split the cost. Uh, if everybody's okay with that, then that's the direction that we'll go. So I guess we'll, we will need to vote on that since that's an action that we're going to be taking jointly tonight. That's right. So, so uh, uh, if y'all vote first and us, or us first and y'all, or however you want to do it. <coughs> y'all, Kayla will need to have that recorded in y'all's minutes because. You are taking action. All right. Well, if we don't vote on it for Franklin County tonight, you'll have a motion to go and put an audit out for seven years. And three, five, seven yes. year increments. Yes. Just do it for three. Put it out to be in those increments. The three year audit, audit three, five, five year audit, seven, seven year audit. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Frank, wait, need a commission to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Commission. commission. I'll, I'll, make, <laughs> I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that we move forward with putting out for bid on three years, five years, and seven years for an audit. Thank you. I'll, I'll second. Y'all slow down. I'll let, let your clerk catch up back in. I know how she's feeling right now. <laughs> she needs to get the motion there. You need me to make the motion again? Okay. I second the motion. Dr. Michael, second that motion. Any discussion? Commissioners, all in favor? We got a 5 0 approval for the audit. All right. Uh, I'll put together a motion that uh, we put out an RQ uh, jointly with Franklin County to do a, uh, for an audit of the airport authority finances in three years, five year, and seven year increments. So it'll be three separate bids. I'll say it. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? Well, thank y'all for hosting this. Yeah. You need to do it for sandwiches, little folks eat. Wish you everybody <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we want to thank everybody for coming out, especially our, our colleagues.